What is up guys, Tech James here. In this video, we're going to be installing and testing the latest version of the MGBA Game Boy Advance emulator. This emulator does have a very good reputation for the PS Vita and PS TV, but it does have quite a few glitches. Sometimes it has graphics glitches, sometimes it has sound glitches, and sometimes the FPS isn't perfect. So in this video, we're going to test out the latest updates. I was going to do a video on this maybe about a month ago, and I completely forgot about it, but then I realized it has actually had a new update since then anyway and I think this new update was probably only maybe about three or four days ago not 100% sure but in this video we're going to go and get it and we're going to install it so if you guys want to update yours as well maybe you already have it make sure to go ahead and do that and if you guys have never got this emulator before you can also follow me in this video and get it installed this is better than the um, RetroArch GBA emulator I think this one uses temp GBA this one is MGBA and I really do like this Game Boy Advance emulator it's very good so let's go ahead and let's install it and let's see if it's had any improvements so we're going to use Vita Shell to install it of course just go ahead and open that up press select um, FTP USB connection it doesn't matter both work perfectly fine so let's go and connect my PS Vita and let's get the latest version of MGBA so what you guys want to do is go to the official MGBA website. Now, whatever version is the latest version will actually be displayed at the top of the web page. Um, at the time of making this video, it's 0.8.1. The last update, which I forgot to cover, was 0.8.0. But since it's had a new update, I guess we can test it out. Let's go onto the latest version. And of course, you're going to choose your system. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you should be using PlayStation Vita. So we're simply going to click on this and it should automatically download us a zip file. Now, this zip file is 7-zip so WinRAR or 7-zip should open this completely fine. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to our downloads folder and let's find our zip file. So let me just make this a bit bigger and here is our zip file. So what we're going to do, we're going to double click to go onto it and we're going to double click into the MGBA folder and we're going to find the VPK in here. We don't need any of the other stuff, just the VPK is fine. So what we're going to do, we're going to drag and drop that in our downloads folder. Now this is the easy part, you literally just drag and drop it onto your PS Vita. If you guys are using FTP connection, also just drag and drop it across and there you go. Let's go and install it. I've already got some ROMs on here, of course you must use your own ROMs. I think in this video we can try Kingdom Hearts, maybe Pokemon Ruby, might do. Might copy across a few ROMs because as you guys know Nintendo don't exactly like me. So here is some emulation news about MGBA version 0.8.1. Um, this is actually on wololo.net. Just keep in mind that all of these fixes displayed right here might not be for the PS Vita. Some of these fixes are for the PC Windows 10 version. The best fixes are probably the memory access, video and BIOS fixes and I guess we can now go onto my PS Vita and we can test out and see what it's like. If you guys want to read this of course you can pause the video or you can go on Wololo's website and you can read all the info about the latest update. Alright guys, so once we are back, let's go back onto our UXO and let's go ahead and find MGBA. Here's the VPK, let's just press X, X again and then we're just going to wait while it's installing. Okay, so once it's installed, what we can actually do is just close down the Vita shell and let's just go and find the app. And here it is, MGBA. What we can do is start it. This is version 0.8.1. Once you guys are on this screen, it's going to ask you to select a file. So what we're going to do, we're going to go onto our UXO and we just need to find our ROMs folder. Now it's entirely up to you where you guys got your Game Boy Advance ROMs from. Mine are from my cartridges and it's completely okay to do that. I do actually have a video on my channel, but you do need an original DS to actually back up your cartridges. But what we're going to do is select a game. I think I'm going to go for Crash Bandicoot and we're basically going to play it and see what it's like. I think this is Crash Bandicoot XS. Um, so as you can see, it does have a bezel on here and I did actually do a video not too while ago showing you guys how to do that in RetroArch so yeah that's pretty cool but let's play a bit I do actually prefer this emulator to the RetroArch one um, let me turn up the volume as well okay so so far the gameplay is completely fine no problems the sound is really good the actions are really good there's no sort of delay between button presses yeah, I can't really see anything wrong with this. If you guys are wondering how to remove this, um, what you actually do is you press square. Uh, so you can change it to gone. Uh, you can change it to full screen. And you can change it to kind of like shrunk a bit. Um, personally, I like full screen. It looks very good. Obviously, it is a Game Boy Advance game, so it might look a bit pixelated. Uh, but I don't really mind it too much. I quite like how it looks in the full screen mode. But let's just play some more gameplay of Crash Bandicoot XS or Huge Adventure. I don't know why it's called that. Um, but yeah. 
I'm perfectly fine. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with this. I think in the last updates there was quite a few sound glitches. Maybe I can try some other games. Uh, but yeah, doesn't look too bad at all. And I haven't had any kind of frame rate drops. So let's do um, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. If you guys are wondering about save files, yes, you can save your game completely fine. Um, so let's just play some of this. Press start. So let's go on World 1. And oh, I like this game looks really nice on the PS Vita actually. Wow, the colours are really, really vibrant. It looks so much better than it does on the original Game Boy, to be fair. Um, but yeah, MGBA, to be honest, um, pretty good. I haven't noticed any problems with it so far. Audio is fine. The gameplay is fine. Um, there's no kind of like on-screen glitches. I mean, obviously, let me just try and like speed run this game. Let's see if we can get any glitches. Yeah, I, to be honest, I can't really see like any issues with it. I'd say playing it with the D-pad is a lot easier than using this, what I was just using. Um, but yeah nothing nothing wrong with this emulator at all i know i said i didn't really want to test too many nintendo games uh, but pokemon is perfect for testing the saving so let's press start let's go to save game would you like to save the game yes um i just chose like a um, you know a default name um, when i was starting the game so there you go land and save the game now what we're going to do is we're going to close the emulator we're going to completely close it down then we're just going to go ahead and start it again mgb8 press X on start and what we're going to do is we're going to try and load the game and hopefully we can get back to our save so as you can see it's brought us back to the ROMs list let's go and load our ROM now it brings you back just like this it is quite interesting um, it kind of skips the Pokemon boot screen uh, but to be honest I don't really mind that at all um, I think that's okay I guess um, I don't know if there is a way to access the boot screen I guess that is kind of like a negative on the game um, but yeah I don't know um, but saves do work I guess and if you're closing out of a game you can you know sort of reopen it um, but yeah I guess that is pretty much it for this video that is the MGBA emulator um, one of the other negatives is you can't really edit much settings there isn't any kind of like you know speed up settings or like weird screen settings um, a lot of emulators do have settings where you can configure so many different things. But if you guys want a simple emulator for your PS Vita that's easy to install, you know, easy to save, and, um, you know, it's pretty good graphics and quality, I definitely recommend it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.